very good morning. A really interesting question. Can one go beyond consciousness? Can one go beyond being? Well, one is always beyond consciousness. One is always beyond being. One gives birth to I. One is I before it gives birth to its own I. But the, the, the whole question is who wants to know? Why a question of this um, intensity, this needfulness? What is the purpose of knowing this, you see? When you, when you experience what they call out of body, when you experience your, your consciousness sifting away and then you have to make a dive to you know, cling on to it, you know, meaning you know, loss of life slowly being put through um, an anesthetic before major surgery and you want to cling on and then suddenly you're nowhere, you're just deep sleep darkness. We don't cling on to our consciousness in deep sleep because we, we are pretty much confident it's not going to go. And if it does, does go, we go with it, you see. <laughs> it's, it's a very simple um, ex explanation of what we are. When we leave our home, we walk out the door. We then walk down the path. We open the car door, we go into the car. And when we arrive at the airport, we park the car and we walk into the airport and we ascend onto the airplane and then we're in the sky. That whole journey it's a very simple journey. It started from the home and you ended up in that vast blue ocean. Maybe above it, maybe above the clouds, maybe you see the stars. That's how high your airplane flies. So when you are coming home, it's the same journey in reverse order, as we said. So when you go from beyond consciousness, the home, beyond being, the home, you're moving into a conscious world through an I, through a birth of a, a thought or a mind. And in this conscious world, you develop a body. And this body continues to grow until it reaches <laughs> its own blue, vast, conscious sky. It's returned home. It could be circular. It could be like um, the airplane. A journey out and the same journey back in reverse order. But the fact is, <laughs> when you leave your home and you are in the airplane, you cannot forget where you came from. You're sitting in the aircraft in the blue sky and you meet a, a, a citizen from a different country or a different city and you say, where have you came from? And, and I came from my home in this city. How did you get here? I came by car. I actually walked, came by car, and now I'm here with you. You can't not detach from the journey of the beginning. We call it a beginning. But where does the journey begin and where does the journey end, you see? 
where does consciousness begin and where does consciousness end? That's much more revealing question than can I go beyond consciousness? Can I go beyond being? Sri Nisargadha Maharaj says, I don't need my being. I don't need to be. I have seen what I am beyond being. I can see through this I am in both directions. I can see I am the person out here and I can see I am that what is before I am within the being state, the consciousness state. We complicate things by thinking there's an end product, by thinking there's a beginning. And we, the speaker is guilty as much as Rumi is guilty to say, I, 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 I return to the beginning. But what Rumi is saying is not the beginning of life, the beginning of me, the person. It was the beginning of mind, the beginning of that that wants and is able to understand that it wasn't experiencing beforehand and it's experiencing now. When you're born as a child, you don't know what you were experiencing in the womb, but you were there. <clears throat> you don't know what you were experiencing before you became <clears throat> a sperm or a, an egg, but you were there, you know? You have many regressions and you realize that hmm, I've not all, always been a male, I've been a female. I've actually been something that I cannot describe because of my reverse journey through the, 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 the ongoing from present to future or from past to present or from past to future, I can go and reverse and rewind and see what happened on the way. But that's just another quest. That's another, I'm, I'm, now I'm not going to look for consciousness. Not, I'm not, now I'm not going to look for beyond consciousness. I'm going to look for my past lives. I'm going to look for what happened. The, the truth is they're inseparable. Beginning and end are inseparable. There is no circle. There's no one traveling along the circle, but there is. There is no beginning and end, but there is to the mind. There is no one living out a life and a story and a narrative with a name and an identity, but there is. They, they're inseparable, you see. That's why non-duality means you return from duality, from separation and merge to become inseparable. And you don't know what you are. You cannot then say, I am the body alone. I am the mind alone. I am the soul alone. I am consciousness alone. I am the whole. And alone means all, all, all alone, all one. Alone means all one. The misinterpretation of words, the misinterpretation of languages, the misinterpretation of even the most profound Sri Nisargadha Maharaj says, I don't need my being. People can misinterpret that and say, well, I have to kill myself. I have to stop breathing. I have to suffocate. But he's just saying, I am at this moment visiting a place where mind is not really relevant, not pertinent, not the most important thing in my life. We have abilities, we are, we are like the octopus, the eye in the middle, but so many legs. This is my leg and I'm experiencing my soul. This is my leg and I'm experiencing my body. This is my leg and I'm experiencing the universe. This is my leg and I'm experiencing the self. This is my leg and I'm experiencing, the, you know, it can get sub legs, depression, anger, sadness, whatever. But, but we, <laughs> the octopus is the most profound way of describing what we are. Without the eye, the octopus does not know where to put the legs. The eye, one single eye. 
the octopus is a gift from God. It says this is you in your entirety. In your legs, you have sub-legs. If you want to experience truth, you have to come back up within the legs into the body and return to the true I. And that I is not the end or the beginning. That I shines in both ways. It shines inside and outside. Beyond sight and as sight. Beyond consciousness and as consciousness. Beyond being and as being. In this I you see <laughs> the whole truth. But what can be the I and ignore the legs, you know? Yeah, because things are pulling at the legs. You know, the phone's ringing. I, I need to answer this phone, you know. Uh, I'm in meditation. I was nearly there. I was nearly back to my eye. And then, and then something experienced very profound and soulful. And I, I thought it was the soul. Now you're down the leg of the soul. Now you're down the leg of thought. Now you're down the leg of mind. Now you're down the leg of me, the person. Now you're down the leg of, of I, the body. The two eyes, you see. There's eyes in every leg of an octopus. These little holes at the end, these little merging, looking, sucking things. They're saying, what's going on in this world, in this ocean? What am I seeing? What can I see through my soul? What can I see through my mind? What can I see through my consciousness? All returning to the same eye. Questions are just moving into another tentacle. When the removal of all questions is goes, when you say, right, no more questions, the answer is immediately there. Because the legs want to know what to do. They need a question to follow it. What are we going to do today, tentacle, body? Mm, now I'm in operation. What can I do? What can I do? When the legs are in no, in no, in no operation, there can be no questions. There can be no needs, no desires, no attachments, no associations. So you're just the pure A. And you can see infinity with clarity. There's no beginning and no end. There's just ongoing witnessing. And that's what you are. Whether you're beyond consciousness or consciousness. As consciousness, ongoing witnessing through these eyes. Beyond consciousness, ongoing witnessing through the true eye. No separation. <laughs> so follow your quest. Follow your questions. Because at some point the legs are going to get entangled. And they're going to fall off. The maple has lost its ribbons. And in that moment... It's, a, it's the most the distressing and suffering way to return to the eye when the legs are all entangled. So I say surrender them now and free them. Let them go. Let them be free. No more thoughts, no more questions, no more ideas towards anything that these legs know anything about. And simply just be eye. 